All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're camped out here in Joshua Tree. We're just north of the National Park. We're on BLM land, free camping at its finest. It's a beautiful sunny day out here on the playa. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys what my solar and onboard power system is kind of evolved into. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, then you might have seen my Eco Power fold-out solar panel and also my Cascadia 4x4 VSS hood-mounted uh, solar panel. Now, the way I used to have these set up was this panel would come in through this little blue C 12-volt socket and then tie in with this panel basically in a series. And then the wires from those would run underneath the hood, underneath the cowl you can see right there. And then basically, I had it run down here. You can see the wires, I need to clean that up a little bit. Down to my Victron MPPT uh, 115 charge controller. And then the wires basically used to run back up here to the Genesis dual battery system. But, uh, well, I, I still do kind of have a little bit of clutter of wires. We're not gonna look at that right now. What I've done is basically taken that out of the equation all right, so what we now, what we basically have is this 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium ion battery, which I've put here underneath the 40% section of my Goose Gear rear seat delete. You can see we have a Victron 350 watt, I wanna say inverter over here, which is fed by the battery. And then what's really neat is I have this, let's move the camera angle here. This Victron Orion DC DC 12 12 18 charger, and now I can charge my Battleborn lithium ion battery from both my solar and from my alternator when the vehicle's in motion, which is really awesome because this battery just has an absolute ton of power. And some other things that I've done to tie this all together is right there, you can see those are two fuses uh I believe those are 60 amp fuses coming from the alternator and then back to the dcd charger and then to the battleborn lithium ion battery you can see all of our 12 volt devices are now powered by a single uh, blue c system uh, six fuse fuse block uh, some people use larger ones that's pretty much all i've needed though honestly let's see what else do i have here i have this ample star which is really cool so what this does is when my Battleborn battery is completely topped off, the ample start, you can see it's actually charging right now. It's sending uh, power slowly back to the Genesis dual battery systems. So that's really cool. Because that way, um, basically now my solar and my alternator will keep both this battery charged and then my solar when I'm at camp for a while will keep this battery topped off. And then also I don't have to worry about my starter battery going dead for whatever reason. And then what's really cool, and you, oh, sorry, you can see we have some more fuses down there. We have a main fuse. I know this is like a rat's nest of wire. Uh, I'm planning on redoing this eventually. You can see the fuse to my inverter. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, basically I've been working on this for a while. I originally had an extra Odyssey Extreme battery down here, but that was before I had the DC DC charger and with just the one uh, AGM battery uh, powering my fridge consistently 24 hours a day just wasn't enough to keep up so I needed more. So that's why I went, well yeah, I pretty much made like a big jump and went for this 100 amp hour uh, Battleborn lithium ion battery. And I mean, if you don't know the, difference, the differences between lithium and AGM, I mean, you have to re really do some research. I'll link some videos down below that really get more into that. I'm not really the guy to talk about that, but yeah. So this battery is awesome because with my fridge running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and just the hood mounted solar panel, I can pretty much, I, every day I have a loss of some voltage, um, but I can get it out to about 10 days running this fridge nonstop. And that's just where I normally park the Jeep. If I had full sun, I could probably keep it going uh, indefinitely. And then also at night, uh, my 12 volt blanket that I've been using to power, uh, that I've been powering off the battery and to keep myself warm, that maybe uses 25% of the battery and that recharges in about an hour of driving. So it's working out really well. And then the really cool part about this system is this guy right here. Let's see if I can get that to focus. This guy is my 
uh, Victron Energy uh, 500 amp smart shunt. And this thing is really cool because this basically takes the place of your, come on, focus. This place takes the place of your negative bus bar. And what that allows me to do is, oh, hold on, get some face ID going there. You can use the Victron app. All right, let's set this guy down. Okay, guys, it's a little bit later now and uh, it's a little bit easier to film this screen. But like I was saying, probably the coolest part of this whole system is by far, I would say, the Victron app because it allows me in real time to see what any of my Bluetooth enabled uh, Victron devices, which is pretty much all of them in my system, are doing. So everything connects in what Victron calls a VE network, and then you're able to make that through the app on your phone. And then you can see here are all of my uh, devices. So starting at the bottom with my uh, Victron MPPT charge controller. Uh, right now, uh, like I said, it's a little bit later and the sun's gone down, so we're not taking in any wattage from solar, but it basically displays uh, whatever, uh, I'm gonna say basically probably a few more times, uh, how many watts we're taking in from our solar and then how many volts, uh, the current and amps, and then it shows what our battery is doing. And here you can see the voltage of our battery, the current that it's at, which is, I think that's like the current that's going into it. Um, and then the temperature, which is 73 degrees, which it gets from this smart battery sensor. You can see the blinking blue light right here. And that sends information to the MPPT charge controller and other Victron devices, uh, specifically the battery temperature. So it's able to perform a better charging algorithm. And also uh, since, since, since lithium ion batteries are very temperature sensitive and they can be damaged if you try to charge them at too low a temperature, it will actually stop the MPPT charge controller and DC-DC charger from attempting to charge the batteries when the temperature is too low. And then if we had an output coming from our charge controller, you'd see that information there, but I have it turned off. Uh, something else that's really cool is you can see a history of how many uh, watt hours you've taken in on any given day, and I think it goes back about 30 days. So I think that's really cool because I can see how much power I've been taking. Like today, since I had my uh, fold-out Eco Power uh, solar panel along with my uh, uh, Cascadia 4x4, you can see we took in a lot of power today, like way more than usual. It was like 200 watt out, uh, yeah, 200 watt hours, and on most days I take in about 90 to 100, and then some trends, which is just graphs. Once again, uh, you know, not. Uh, uh, history, just what you're seeing real time since the app has been open. And then you're able to change settings within the device to work with whichever type of battery you're using. See next, the DC-DC charge controller. Um, I, you know, I do wish that this uh, gave you more information, I guess. Like pretty much all it tells you is whether it's off or charging and then, you know, voltage and, and then the output voltage. And that's pretty much it. I wish it actually told you maybe the amps or the watts that were coming off the alternator, but you know, I guess it is what it is. And then once again, a graph, not a history, just from what you're seeing since it's been on, then you can adjust your settings for whatever type of battery you have, AGM, you know, lithium, whatever. And then the inverter, um, once again, kind of lackluster. Uh, the inverter does not have Bluetooth built in. You have to use the Victron Bluetooth dongle, which is extra. So uh, it does say some cool stuff though, like basically shows the power output. Right now I'm charging my laptop off my 110 plug, which I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. Uh, so you can see it going up and down. I wish it actually showed you the watts or amps coming out or like the voltage or something, but pretty much just kind of like just shows you, like if I was using the full max, it would go, you know, up all the way. And then uh, shows you the AC output. We're doing 120, stated is currently inverting, and then the voltage of the battery once again. And then in the settings, what's really neat is if I don't wanna use the inverter, no matter what position the switch is on, I can go into the app and I can uh, turn it on, off, or put it in eco mode. And eco mode will, let's see, what is it? So it wakes up at 15 watts, so I have, which. You know, for eco mode, if you have a device that's less than 15 watts, like say maybe a, a cell phone, I haven't tested it, but it might not work. I don't know. Um, so that's kind of cool. But right now I'm going to keep it on because I am charging my laptop, like I said. All right. And then from the inverter, we have smart battery, uh, smart battery sense. 
And once again, this just shows the battery voltage and the temperature. And uh, this is the long distance version. And I've actually gotten probably 50 to 60 feet of distance out of this, like, you know, just across um, open terrain. So I think that's kind of cool. Once again, trends, you know, it's only what you're seeing in real time, uh, temperature and voltage and whatnot. So very cool. And then last but not least, the absolute coolest device. I freaking love this thing. So this is rad because it actually shows you uh, the amount of power you have left in your battery in percent form. And since this is a 100 amp hour battery and it's lithium ion, unlike AGM, we can actually use that full 100 amp hours. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very accurate. So right now you can see our state of charge is 94%, the battery voltage, uh, current for point, you know, whatever amps are coming out. And right now, I think I hear the fridge running, so you can see we have power coming out. I also have my rear tailgate light on, and uh, of course the inverter's running, so this is what we have coming out right now, which is very cool. Now, if the DC-DC charger were getting power from the alternator while the motor's running, or we had solar coming in, uh, the negative would go away and you would actually just see the number of whatever is coming in. Like when the DC-DC charger is running, this usually says about 260 watts and that's my input. And then you'll see the current, which I believe is 18 amps. Let's see, consumed amp hours, which I also think is very cool. Since this is a 100 amp hour battery, it's everything's very clear. So you can see we've used 6.4 amp hours currently. Um, and with this current watt draw, we have roughly 23 hours remaining. So that's pretty cool. That's a long time. So something like my fridge, if the, which the fridge cycles on and off, it doesn't actually run full time. It, it pulls about 60 watts and yeah, going on and off it, I can probably get about 10 days out of that. I've, I've gotten, I've taken it to seven, but I've never gone full 10, but yeah, very cool. So. And when we have solar coming in, it will just say infinite, which is very cool. And then I ran a lead all the way to the starter battery, and you can see the voltage of that. And that's actually lower. I don't know what it is about the Genesis system. Um, I don't know if there's like some resistance or whatever, but that is not the correct voltage. I have it attached to the two posts on the Genesis, and it's actually higher than that. I don't know why it's always lower, but whatever. <clears throat> So yeah, overall pretty cool. And then I think once again, yeah, another cool thing about this is the history. I have not reset this since I got this whole system in, uh, gosh, a few months ago, I think, or a couple months ago now. So there we go. You can see our deepest discharge is 67 amp hours and our last discharge was seven amp hours. Our negative seven amp hours, average discharge is negative 47 amp hours. And for the life of this, we've used a cumulative 1,271 amp hours of uh, basically, you know, power that we've generated just through the Jeep. Um, energy, j discharge energy, we've discharged a total of 16.9 kilowatt hours. Charged energy, we've charged 17.7 kilowatt hours. Uh, it tells you the total charge cycles that it's gone through, time since last full charge. You know, battery, the, the minimum battery voltage, uh, just max re maximum, it's just everything. It's pretty cool. And then down here is a... a option to reset and then over here we have trends once again it's just what has been done since the uh, uh app has been open and then of course through the shunt you have a bunch of you know settings and whoops, yes to connect you have a bunch of settings for the battery you have alarms miscellaneous see this is the v smart network these are the devices that it's using so it's connected to this and it's using the temperature from my smart battery sense yeah, just very, very cool. Very cool setup. I'm really pleased with everything that Victron's done. You see battery capacity, 100 amp hours. And if you're wondering, I mean, besides the fact that this amp, this lithium ion battery holds so much more power, just to put it into perspective for you, do you guys why I didn't just get like a second AGM or something? This lithium ion battery weighs like 31, 32, 33 pounds, and it has 100 amp hours of usable power versus the 63 pound odyssey extreme which was 63 amp hours and i could use at most uh, 50 percent of that so it would literally take three of those at about 100 almost 200 pounds to equal what this one battery can do so yeah very cool all right now let's take a look at the inverter and everything it can do all right guys so like i was saying uh, on the back side of our goose gear 40 percent delete 
right behind our driver's seat there, just to give you some perspective. I have this Victron, uh, to correct myself, it's a 375 watt inverter. The factory inverter that the Jeep comes with is like 300 watts or something. So I figured going just over that should be fine. And honestly, um, you know, I don't have any devices that would need any more wattage than this can provide. And, you know, it's only for small things like mainly my laptop. But you can see we have our two main leads coming out. And there's also a cable for the Bluetooth dongle, which I mounted behind here. And then it's kind of tough to see. But this is our main 80 amp fuse for the inverter. The inverter does have an internal 80 amp fuse, but I'm hoping that that one will blow before the inverter does because it can't be replaced. And then over on this side, you can see we have our single 110 plug. And I use this really heavy duty extension cord that was like the perfect, perfect length. And then we come all the way around to this guy. And this thing I'm super pleased with super clean install so you can see at the bottom of our c pillar where our rear passenger seat belts used to be but now this is hollow because we took them out i installed this nice flush little 110 socket yeah really cool i found this thing on amazon uh, if you want to pick one up and use it then you know you can use them for all kinds of things i'll put a link in the video description down below but yeah that's basically charging my laptop which is sitting right there Ooh, fire and then also I installed this Blue C Systems dual USB plug, which is really nice. So, let me take that out. It seals really well with the cap, so it's uh, mostly waterproof. And then anytime I need it, it's actually very tight. I can just plug in my USB devices. And earlier, I was, this is actually how I was charging my camera, so very cool. Yeah, very nice. But overall, I'm very pleased with that setup. Now, anytime I'm sitting here in the back of the Jeep, and I want to work on something I can or if I'm back at the tailgate table which is what I'm doing right now I can work on my computer and still get charged and charge my devices and just yeah really cool setup all right guys so I know that uh, this can be a little bit dry if you're not really into uh, solar and electrical it's not really for everybody but I think it's pretty cool and you know hopefully you do also so if you're interested in getting any of the parts or the components that I use in this system I will uh, put links in the video description down below. I'll also put uh, links for relevant videos like my uh, original solar installs for my Eco Power and my Cascadia 4x4 hood mountain solar system. Um, and yeah, and soon I'm gonna do a video comparing uh, my onboard power system to something like a Jackery. Uh, I don't own a Jackery, but I have access to one, so I think that could be kind of cool. Um, this obviously isn't for everybody. There's a lot more going on here, a lot more components, and there's a lot more money involved than simply buying something like a Jackery or a, gosh, well, I mean, Dometic. Everybody makes portable battery banks nowadays. So you just kind of have to figure what's, you know, best and easiest for you. But I'm really into this stuff. You know, I like to nerd out on solar and electrical. Uh, I don't like doing electrical, but I, I think it's cool stuff. So yeah, uh, like I said, links in the video description down below for, you know, as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you have any suggestions, if you saw something other than the fact that it's a rat's nest of wires, if you saw anything that, you know, comments, concerns, questions, like you think I did something wrong, let me know, please. Uh, I don't want to burn my Jeep down. So yeah, you guys take it easy.